Now everybody knows the child that they serve you inside of prison ain't all that. Literally, it's the bottom of the barrel. You're going to have to freshen it up and add the fixings and everything yourself if you want to even taste it because it's so bland. On top of that, the officers do so much shit that they get away with that it's like inmates ain't got no voice. Well, for this one here, I'm going to tell you about a time when I was locked up in Florida prison and our whole dorm went on a food strike in order to get their attention. Ha <laughs> ha, dom the best, finna be this way till I EOS Take it how you want nigga, yeah I'm a pro Fuck around and bust your lot while you're at Vizzo I hate to be this way but I live for the moment Waking up every day, show me an opponent Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks So much pool, I can even start you from the box You don't wanna pay rent, got me bent Got lax on deck, your money was well spent Vultures on the prowl, so don't try test And step two, cause violent first steps finesse And you a hold down man, suitcase this My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted What's up, y'all? You already know, man. K for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, and also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be telling y'all about a situation that took place while I was locked up in the state of Florida to where we needed to get the officer's attention, and I felt like they wouldn't hear us unless we all did this, okay? Now, like I said in the intro, you know, the guards get away with whatever they want, and sometimes... It's impossible to get the higher powers attention, all right? And what I mean by that is you have different lines of officers. You have a TA, which is someone who just started. Then you have an officer. Then on top of the officer, you have a Sarge. And then above that, you got like lieutenant, you know, and, and shit like that. And it, it works its way up. And then, of course, you know, the warden, the big dog. So they were bucking us at this time on canteen. Now, while I was locked up during my period of, you know, my sentence, I went to several camps, all right? This institution I was at at this time happened to be Calhoun CI, which is in Bluntstown, Florida, okay? And the way that they ran canteen over there, which if people don't know what canteen is, it's commissary. It's where you get your snacks, your chips, your soups, your honey buns, your tunas, your milks, your oatmeal, your cereal, whatever it is you're trying to get. It is not inside the dorm. I know there's some private camps down here in the state of Florida that actually have the canteen inside of their dorm. Not every camp in Florida has that. No camp I've ever been to had that. You feel me? Only the private camps have that. Now, the way that they did canteen and they ran the compound was Mondays they'd start with A dorm. So it'd be like, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G all the way around, but then it would be like you know, Mondays, and then the next day, Tuesday, wherever they end all, wherever they end at is who they pick up with the next day. You understand? So it's like if Monday comes and they do A1 and A2, you know, and then they get A and then they get B1 out the way. When Tuesday starts, they're going to pick back up on B2. You see what I'm saying? And then whoever they get, wherever they end there, when Wednesday starts, they're going to pick up on that dorm. Well, me, I happened to be in G2, which was considered gangland. There was a lot of extortion going on. There was a lot of robbing going on. There was a lot of fighting. There was a lot of force of people to fight. There was a lot of gambling going on. All the above. So, we were like the most hated dorm. All right? And every time something would go down, the warden would come down there. You know, and he, he literally would like, we'd have to lay on our bunks with our hands on the back of our head like this, face down. They don't want to see our eyes, is what they would yell. And they'd come in there like 15 deep, all dressed up like some of the dudes on Call of Duty Warzone. They'd come in there all masked up and shit, gooned out with all their, with their little mace paintball guns and the whole nine. You feel me? So, we could never really get the warden's, you know, attention other than if bad things were happening, you know? So, it was kind of like... When we weren't getting into shit or when, when things were going on in the dorm and we weren't getting in trouble for it, you know, like we never caught the attention of the guards, our housing officer, along with the TA he was training, they hated us. They hated the inmates in the dorm. So it was like they already were locked in to do their job one type of way. You see what I'm saying? So it's like even if we stay out of trouble, we stay off the radar, we don't get the warden, you know, screaming at them about our dorm, okay? It isn't like they would treat us any different. And what I mean by that is like we ain't looking for special attention. We don't want to be treated any different than other dorms are treated, but we feel like 
we get treated like as a punishment even when we ain't doing nothing wrong because the guard already done had so many bad situations with our dorm that it's just locked in. He's going to treat us like shit regardless. So why should we stay out of trouble? Why shouldn't we be fighting? Why shouldn't we be gambling? Why shouldn't we be robbing and extorting people? If you think about it, because even when we're not, even when the dorm's doing what's right, they still treated us like shit. And it was our dorm alone. The rest of the compound had it made. They had no problems hitting canteen. They had no problems going to wreck when it was time to go to wreck. But it was strictly our dorm, which the warden too, he didn't like our dorm either. He used to come into our dorm and when we were all laying on our bunks, like I said, with our hands on our head, laying on our stomach, on our, on our mats, he would say, all my problems are right here in this one dorm. The reason I don't mix nobody up or split nobody up because then we'll have a problem in the whole institution. Instead, I got all my problems right here in this one dorm. And one day that bus is going to back up and it's going to take all of y'all. That's what he used to threaten us with. Now, for those that don't know, inside of prison, one of the main things that you have to do is cell inspection. You see what I'm saying? And even if you're in an open bay, they're still going to do inspection. You, it's not like you just have to be like in a two-man cell, okay? Now, when you do a two-man cell and you're getting an inspection, you literally got to worry about what your bunkie's got going on. You feel what I'm saying? You got to make sure his shit's made. You got to make sure, you know, everything is cleaned and everything. You know, you can't just think like, oh, well, I'm good, and then his is all messed up because they're going to take it out on the whole cell. You feel me? And open bays... They take it out on the whole quad. The whole open bay is going to get held accountable. You feel me? So what they used to do is they wanted people to like look forward to passing inspection at Calhoun. So what they did is whoever came in first, second, and third got a bigger TV put inside of their day room. Okay, now every day room has a little TV up there. You feel me? But if you came in first place out of the inspection of that week, they would literally push one of them carts that you see in like a school. They'd push a cart over there and it'd have a big ass flat screen TV on it. And they'd, it wouldn't be up there in the air and they would literally push it to the front of the day room so everyone could watch the big screen. Now, G dorm where I was at, we tried to get that shit so many times. You feel me? And it was like we were never good enough. It was like no matter what, they was always gonna pick the same dorm. No matter what, they were always going to pick people that worked for Pride. You know what I'm saying? Like the Pride program. They always going to pick that dorm. That's who always like won. You feel me? So then after a while, you know, for the first like six, seven months while I was in that dorm, we didn't care about that shit. We didn't care about first place. We don't care about no big TV or nothing like that. But after a while, we're like, you know what? We want to show them we could do it. You feel me? So everything's up to date. I'm talking about everybody's beds made. Everything's swapped, uh, swept, mopped. All the shower heads, you got to like get all the rust off of them and sand them and polish all the sinks and all this different shit. And after we started trying so, so hard to get it, we realized they ain't giving it to us. You feel me? So... We're like, man, what's the point of even trying it, bro? Like, it don't really matter. We happy with the TV we got. You can't even see that big-ass TV, you know, when you're in the day room because it's like you got a bunch of aisles of seats and, and, and then the TV's ground level. So you got people's heads that are in front of you. You can't see. Fuck that. I'll take the little one up in the corner all day, you know? We eventually won the shit one time and then that's how we realized, oh, that shit wasn't even all that, you know? But the whole meaning of the video is even when we weren't getting in trouble, okay, they were bucking us on canteen. So why do you think we were robbing? Why do you think we were extorting and gambling and fighting? Because if you think about it, we're robbing because we can't go hit the canteen window and spend our own money we have. So we want what that person has. Extortion. Same thing. They got shit that we ain't got. We want it. Gambling. We're hoping to win what they have because we want more than we have. And a lot of fights that broke out in our dorm was from people gambling and not paying their debt because they didn't have the money because they weren't allowed to hit the canteen window to get their money. You feel me? So people want canteen, so they gambling like they got the bread and really they don't have the bread on them. So now, since the guards are bucking us on canteen, we can't get the money 
from the people that owe us or people who owe money can't get it and pay their debt. So a lot of fights were going on due to the simple fact that they were bucking us on canteen. Okay, now what I mean by bucking us on canteen is for like two, almost three weeks straight, like I said, A dorm starts on Monday. They do A1, A2, B1, B2, goes all the way around. By the time it hits G dorm, every single time, not only were they like bucking us, but they were bucking G2 directly, which we were the last quad until it goes back to A dorm. So G1 was even getting canteen by the time it go around throughout the week. Bam. And then next thing you know, it'd be getting dark out or it's about to get dark. So next thing you know, they can't squeeze us in there to hit the canteen window before they tell us compounds locked down. You feel me? Or when it does come to where, hell yeah, we got enough time to hit canteen. You feel me? It ain't getting dark out and we next. They'd fuck around and order our dorm to go to wreck. See? So you can't go to rec and canteen at the same time. So if they, and it isn't like they'll be like, oh, whoever wants to go to rec, line up. Whoever wants to go to canteen, line up. No, what they were doing is they pick and choose who goes where. The guards would yell it over the walkie talkie. Okay, uh, uh, B dorm, C dorm, and D dorm, y'all get ready for rec. G dorm, A dorm, y'all get ready for canteen. That's how it, that's exactly how it goes. So on the days where, we got enough time to hit canteen. They were sending us to wreck. You feel me? So a bunch of us didn't want to go to wreck because we were like, man, we're going to try to slide out and hit the canteen window. So then you got people trying to slide and hit the canteen window when you're not allowed. And they had that pound locked down. It isn't like any other pound I've been to. Like these guards, these security nine officers, that's what they're called, security nine. These guards were like on their job. Like, they hated inmates, so they literally were strictly by the books. You know what I'm saying? country out dudes chewing dip. Even the black officers chewed dip. You feel me? And they just, they would be on your trail, bro. So much to where you ain't sliding hitting that canteen window. You feel me? They gonna catch you, boom, cuff up, you go to confinement now. Unauthorized area. 15 days in the box. That's how it was. So it was like pointless to even try to hit the window because you've seen so many people fall trying it. Seen so many people get caught, get caught. And it's to the point to where your officer could pop your door and say, go ahead, hit the canteen window. And then when you're on your way out there, them security and iron will stop you. And then you'll be like, no, no, they'll be like, your door man ain't right, I'll cuff up. And they'll be like, no, my, my, my officer said I can come out, I don't want to hear. And they'll take you to confinement like your officer baited you up. That's how it was there, you feel me? So they were literally bucking us real bad on canteen. And then when the next day rolls around, say say the next day, boom, it's supposed to start on us then. They want it. They'd start back at A-Dorm, A1, straight buck us. Straight buck us. And we got tired of that shit, you know? And it was more of like they were disciplining us for no reason in my dorm. So we wanted to speak to the warden. So many different situations occurred to try to get the warden's attention, and the warden was not hearing it. You feel me? Like he would not come down there and hear what us inmates have to say. So we decided one day during chow time, the whole dorm's going to go on hunger strike. And it's, it's harder than, you know, you think it is. It's easier said than done when I say the whole dorm went on hunger strike. Because you have people who were with it. Who were like, hell yeah, fuck it, I'm with it. You know me, I laugh a lot and shit. So I'm like, shit, Liz, what it is? You feel me? I had canteen and everything, you know? So I'm like, shit, Liz, what it is? Fuck that child. Then you got the people who weren't with it. Then you got the ones that are going to try to force them to fight if they go to child. Whoever goes to child, when you come back, you better be ready to fight. And you got, I'd say out of 90 inmates, you got 35 of them telling you that. For whoever goes to child, when you come back, you better be ready to pack your shit because you're going to have to check in. Now, the gang members, they were all with it. You feel me? They, it wasn't like someone like, oh, hell, no, I'm going to child. No, a lot of them were all with it because all their brothers was with it. You know what I'm saying? Monkey see, monkey do. If five of them say, oh, we, we finna buck child, the rest of them are going to buck child. You see, that's just how it was. So my whole dorm did not go to child on that day in order to get the warden's attention, and guess what? It worked. So when they're calling people for child, boom, 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 boom. Next thing you know, they call around, G2, line up for child. And nobody walks out that door at all. It caught their attention, like, damn, what's going on over here? So then they radio in the officer 
Send your dorm out for child. Send your dorm out for child. He's yelling over the intercom. Last call for child. Child. Last call for child. And then he comes in there to see what the problem is. And that's when we all rose up. And we were like, man, hell no. Fuck that. We going on a hunger strike. We going on a hunger strike. And then by something that severe, by the whole dorm doing it, it caught the warden's attention. And he came down there and wanted to hear what we had to say. You feel me? And guess what happened? When he came down there, two people went to confinement. You feel me? Because they were arguing back and forth with him. You know what I'm saying? But like, on some shit like, man, you finna let us hit that window. Da, 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 da. Y'all got me fucked up. Like cursing and different shit like that, you know. They went harder than they should have went. Because at the end, when he came down and he heard what everybody had to say, we're like, man, they've been bucking us on. Canteen. You see what I'm saying? Forcing us to go to rec just so they could say we're bucked on canteen. Or on the days when we don't get rec, where we get canteen, you feel me? We're stuck in the dorm still. So if they say every dorm goes to rec except for G-Dorm, but then the dorm before G-Dorm goes and then G-1 goes, next thing you know it's getting dark out, so boom, we don't get to go, right? If you look at it, we didn't get to go to rec either because we had to stay back because our dorm didn't go to rec. So we were forced to wait for canteen, which shit, that's what we all want. And then bam, they buck us, G2. We were the last quad on the compound. You feel me? Except for H dorm, which was separate. That was a butterfly building, you know what I'm saying? T building, I mean. But I'm talking about like the open bays. So it was like we had a good solution when we were telling them. Like, man, hell no. Nah. You feel me? Like, we want to show you that you bucking us on canteen. And that food they feed us ain't even good. So it's like we're being forced to eat that nasty ass shit when a lot of us buck chow anyways. A lot of us don't even go to chow. You see what I'm saying? Straight up, a lot of us don't even want that stuff. You know, some of us might do a real walkthrough. That's what we used to call. We used to call it a real walkthrough. And we would just go and walk through, get our tray, boom, give it to somebody, you know, or sit down and fucking pick at it. And there's been times that we've walked to the chow hall, grabbed our tray and our cup and walked and dumped the tray and filled our cup up just to get something cold to drink and chugged it and kept walking. That's how it is. Like that food isn't enjoyable, you know. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, I used to tear it up. Different camps, people make the shit different. You feel what I'm saying? And then when you got canteen, you can fix it up like you need to fix it up. You can add flavor into anything you have. You know, so it really don't matter. You feel me? But if you ain't got that shit and, like, you're forced to eat it, it's one thing. But when they're purposely taking canteen privileges from you and forcing you to go to rec on rec days, you're going to be like, hell no. Nah. Now I feel like they're forcing me to eat them trays. See, even in confinement, man, they give you your trays. You ass hungry, you're going to eat it all. There's things that I ate while I was in prison that I never had on the streets before. You feel me? And then I love it now. Just from prison. They were giving us okra. You feel me? Like, I like fried okra. I've had fried okra before. But they were giving us, like, boiled okra to where that bitch, like, was all slimy with these beads and shit. It looked like something you see off Alien vs. Predator. It was all gooey and slimy and shit. It had little beads all in it. And I was tearing that shit up. Squash and zucchini. Love it. Everybody would put that shit back out there, out the flat, or still on their tray. No, nah, no, nah, hell no, nah, let me get that. Squash and zucchini, boiled, nasty looking shit. Teared it up. Sardines. I didn't like sardines when I first went to prison. Never even gave them a chance until I was stuck in confinement. Boy, my back was touching my stomach. And there was nothing I could do. And I ate that shit because my bunkie owed me a bunch of trays, you feel me? And he was flight risk because he was going to get out. Before he could pay me in time. Because I wasn't taking his lunch. Because he was on a RDP diet. Which is religious diet program. You feel me? He wasn't on the regular trays like us. But he got sardines. And I didn't like them shits. You feel me? But even people in confinement get canteen and stuff sent to them back there. And get stuff sent to them from the kitchen. And order to doctor up their trays. That's how you know that shit ain't good. You feel me? That shit's bland. Bland as hell. You feel me? You get chili. It's like slop. You get pasta and meat sauce, it's a slop. You know what I'm saying? After a while, you get immune to it and you adapt and you eat it because you know you got to. You feel me? You, it goes down, you know, but it ain't like you, 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 you're you not to where they're forcing you to eat it. You got the choice to go to chow or not. But since they purposely bucking us on canteen, even when we ain't getting in trouble, even when we slow down on the... You know, the gambling, slow down on forcing people to fight, the Friday night fight nights, all this stuff. We slow down on all this shit 
and dead ass had got first place on the inspection for that TV close to when all this was going down. So it was like, damn, bro, like this guard was purposely trying us. And at the end of the day, none of them are going to reach out to the higher powers. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to reach out to a lieutenant or a sarge. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to reach out there because then if the officer or the guard, I mean the sarge sides with us, then it's going to look like the officer or the TA is in the wrong, you feel me? So it was like, they know they were doing flaw by bucking us, purposely trying us. You know what I'm saying? Because if they didn't, they would just straight up say, oh yeah, you know, man, you, tomorrow it's guaranteed and then it be guaranteed. But they told us that so many times. They told us, first, I already put the word in, man, tomorrow, as soon as canteen opens, boom, y'all are the first to go. So that kind of like calmed us down and held us through the night to where we're like, all right, so now people are getting themselves in the bigger holes, though. You had a moment, we hit canteen, you know what I'm saying? Bah, 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 bah. And then the next day come, they buck us. So then we holler at, like, man, man, what's, what the fuck, bro? We supposed to get, see? And then another thing, too, for people who got call-outs, for people who got school, for people who got to go to work during the day shift, as soon as the door pops, you got to leave. They might do canteen call-out while you're at work or at your call-out somewhere. You might be in school when they let your dorm go hit canteen. You see? So then now you're trying to skip school. You feel me? Then when you skip school, you get an absence in school. You know? And they usually call the dorm and come get your ass. You feel me? But you're trying to risk getting an unauthorized area, DR, because you're not where you're supposed to be at. You're still back in your dorm. Trying for canteen. The next thing you know, they buck you on canteen. Or they say rec, mandatory rec. So now, it looks like you didn't go to school and you're out on the rec yard having fun. But really, you were forced to go to rec. You stayed back to hopefully hit canteen and then go to school late. See, like it was all types of, they kind of like bait you up to where you get put in confinement over so much shit. And it's unreal. So when we did that hunger strike and that warden finally gave us, you know, access to canteen, he let us hit the canteen window, right? So everybody was like, all right, boom. Now we know how to get his attention next time. You feel me? And it always locked in and stuck with us. That's how we get their attention. You see, that's exactly how we were like, boom, this is going to have to get the warden's attention. This skips over all the other powers before him. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, a couple people went to confinement when the warden came there because they were mouthing all back and forth with the warden. You know, like we went back and forth with the warden, but not like they did. They were on some like... They played is what, how they say it. You feel me? And there's a couple other times where I remember when we tried to get the warden's attention. This was before the hunger strike. We tried to get his attention when it was count time. And when it's count time, they want everybody to sit on their bunk, right? It ain't no laying down. They want everybody to sit on their bunk. Well, what happened was is we all laid down and decided not to sit up during count time. The officer came in there screaming and shit like Conan and Hercules. And the next thing you know, people got scared, you know, and started slowly rising. You feel me? And the first person he ran up to was, was bunk one. You feel me? The first person he ran up to, which was the first bunk. Oh, you better sit out right now. He picked them up, put them in handcuffs, walked them out the door, went to the second one, started screaming this and that, this and that. Picked him up. He went out the door. You feel me? So like... Once they seen the first one go, the second one sat up, then the third one, the, and then it was like the next, they all started rising, each bunk they went to. You feel me? Like you seen they just made a damn example of bunk one, so everybody started rising, nobody really stuck with that. But when it came to the child, it was more of like, you know, more inmates that were against not going to get the warden's attention, against ones that wanted to go to child, there was no chance. So it overpowered them. And there was literally only probably, I'd say, 10 people in the dorm that really cared to go to chow. You see what I'm saying? When this whole situation occurred. You feel me? But that got us canteen. You feel me? Because they were on some bullshit, man, at, at, at Calhoun. Literally, like, it was so bad with the extortion in our dorm that me and you couldn't even trade nothing. You feel me? Like, we could trade, but they'd come through with the damn, with the laundry cart. You feel me? They'd come through with the laundry cart and make everybody, they tell everybody, open your locker. Lay back on your bunk and want your, we want your locker wide open. And they'd come around and they want a receipt within the last 24 hours of everything that you purchased that's in your locker. You feel me? They'd come around with that laundry cart and then me, I had a clear tumbler cup. And every time I, ever, I would just ball the receipt up and throw it in there. So I had like piles of receipts. You feel me? And I remember they took a shitload of my food out of there. 
You know what I'm saying? And what it was is it was from last time we hit the window. You know, I still just had so much in my locker. I hit the window again, you feel me? So I didn't have a receipt within the last 24 hours. But I had the receipt before that one, which was like 72 hours ago. And I showed him like, hey, look, man. Hell no, nah, bro. Look, this, this, man, my receipt's right here for that. A couple of my shit got taken along with that also because I had just traded soups for cookies. So like someone will owe you something and then they give it to you and then you might owe someone else something. But what you owe them isn't what you collect from them. So it's like if I owe you three bags of Doritos because we betted on this football game that just went down on Saturday. I owe you three bags of Doritos, right? Then I'll tell this other dude when he hits the window to get me three bags of Doritos along with however much more he owes me. You feel me? Next thing you know, he comes, all I got was soup and chips. I mean, soups and cookies. So then I'll get the soups and cookies from him because I'm still going to collect my money. But now I got to off this shit to someone else for the Doritos because I told bro I was going to get him Doritos. You know, there's plenty of times that I went like, hey, I can't get the Doritos, but I got this. Unless you want to wait till we hit the window again. You know, shit like that. But I had just swapped with someone. So my receipt showed the damn like the cookies. And like his receipt showed the soups, but it was like we had them in the opposite lockers because we just swapped. They took both our shit. They had a laundry cart straight filled with canteen. You feel me? From them going from each bunk because of how bad the extortion was. You see what I'm saying? And it was, it was bad enough to where like people forced people to hit the window. See at Charlotte and stuff like that, people will steal your ID and hit the window behind your back. You'll go to hit your card and that shit will be zero because someone already swiped your shit and put it back on your jacket or put it back on your bunk or wherever. You might be walking through the dorm, oh, there's my ID. I'm glad no one found it. And then you go hit your window, you're out of money. And then you're yelling at your people, man, I thought you said you dropped it. Your old lady saying, I did drop it at these lying ass, bitch, I went and checked it, ain't on there. Really don't know. Inmates were robbing your ass, swiping, swiping. At Calhoun, it was different. A bitch will be on the window like this, forcing you to go hit that window, giving you a, uh, like, a, like a list, huh, like this, watching you. Or they'll go get in line behind you just to make sure, just to pay attention to your face. Your face tells it all. You feel me? And I told this a long time ago in videos when it came to extortion, how we used to sit there and lay on people to peep if they got money or not. Go wait in line and shit, like I want to get a card check, boom. And you can always tell. When you got your eyes on someone, you could tell if they was expecting the money. You could tell if they were like, is it on there? If they're excited, then that means they're expecting something. No, it's nothing. All right. Boom. They walk off. Yeah, there ain't nothing on there, but they're expecting it. You feel me? We used to peep people's energies and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? So it was real bad. You feel me? So that still didn't, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of it was like that because the shit that we were able to get away with. You get what I'm saying? If you can get away with things, people are going to take advantage and do it. You know, if someone comes in there and they're, they're, they're straight soft and they want to give up the money that their people worked hard for on the streets, then they're going to do it regardless if we take it from them or if they take it from them. Wherever they go, someone's going to take it from them because that's how it was in prison. You see what I'm saying? And it was crazy because us going on that food strike, you know, caught the attention. And it was to the point to where... Julia Jones, which is like the head of classification in Tallahassee, came down. She ended up coming down there like a week and a half later and wanted to do a severe inspection of our compound because we had a whole dorm refuse to eat. You see what I'm saying? And that's crazy. Like we only did that not because we weren't hungry or not because their food was the worst in the world. No, we did that because that's what we needed to do to get the officer's attention because... The guards that we had watching us didn't give a shit. He wasn't speaking out for us. He was too worried about getting yelled at by a higher power guard by pushing the issue that the inmates in his quad need to hit canteen. He didn't want to get yelled at by the higher power. So he just straight said, fuck all of us. That's basically how it was. And after us getting bucked so many times, you know, you think about it, bro. That's a long time to go. Almost three weeks with no canteen. That's a long time to go. Why you think people are robbing? You see, why you think people are putting down and forcing people? Like, because, you know, people are hungry. If people got access to money and you're not letting them go to it on purpose when they are not doing nothing wrong. Like I said, at this time, everything slowed down with all the robbing and everything before they bucked us on the canteen. So it isn't like, oh, of course it slowed down because y'all didn't have canteen to rob. No, we slowed down from doing all this shit prior you feel me? Before they even started bucking us. 
It was all because that guard, bro. So we had to do what we had to do to go on a hunger strike. You feel me? And that's one thing I will never forget while I was locked up. See what I'm saying? But anyways, y'all, I'm going to wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Like I always say, if y'all have ever went through this type of situation or if you've ever had anybody else say, bitch, we going on a hunger strike, drop it in the comment section. Let me know if there's anything y'all did to get the guard's attention because the officers that was working in your dorm at that time would not speak up and be the voice for y'all. If there's certain things you had to do to get their attention, drop it in the comment section. I'm pretty sure everybody that reads the comments would like to know about it. But anyways, y'all, I appreciate y'all watching. Like I always say, make sure you keep them rat squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, clout chasers, people who pull out gold, people that make up shit on YouTube but wasn't even affiliated when we was in prison. Keep them out your circle, man. Until next time, this the one and only Frog.